Today we're going to show you how to put together a super easy $600 gaming PC that will actually blow you away. It can game at 1080p and even some entry level 1440p and the best part is it is super easy to put together and we're going to show you guys how after a word from today's sponsor. As a tech enthusiast and dare I say PC building expert, there's only one thing that fuels my carnal desire for destruction and that's seeing someone with unactivated windows. Luckily for you, today's video sponsor GVG Mall is here to help. GVG Mall is an online marketplace with game keys and windows licenses for cheap. The best part is it's extremely easy. All you have to do is purchase a key using code TV20, then just copy and paste the key into Windows. And beyond just saving big on game keys or Windows 10 or 11 keys, you also get to avoid my wrath. Check out GVG Mall today and be sure to use code TV20 to save big on your purchase. So this right here is from our friends at PC Server Parts, and this is the HP Z4 G4. I said it right, I swear. And this is a pretty cool computer because for one, it's not nearly as large as those big P520s. So not nearly as heavy, not nearly as large, just much more standard ATX. And it has a really cool CPU, the i7-7820X, which is eight core, 16 thread. Should be a good amount better than those Lenovo's we normally buy, but 294 bucks after the discount code. This thing also does come with a 1000 watt power supply, which our friends at PC Server Parts mentioned that that is standard for all the models that you would get if you buy this system. And as you can see right here, I kind of wish we had this when we did our 5090 in a office PC video because this does come with two eight pins and we have two eight pins down here. So we have four eight pins off a thousand watt power supply. Probably would have worked a lot better for our 5090 video, but all jokes aside, this Z4 G4 is super easy to work in. Again, with the CPU cooler, you have a nice and cool 7820X, which is a pretty solid CPU. And uh, we went with 16 gigs of RAM for this one dual channel, but you can run true quad channel memory if you load this thing up. We should use our discount code down below for PC server parts to buy this PC. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is talk about the GPU we bought for it, the storage we bought for it, and how to upgrade this system to get ready to game. So this nice Founders Edition card is an RTX 3070 that we got for about 289 on eBay. And this one's in pretty darn good shape. It actually still has the Micro Center tag on the back of it. So someone bought this pretty early back in the day. Uh, it does actually come with the power adapter that we're gonna need because you might see this and think, well, wait, this computer does not have this. Well, don't worry, you got this. It just takes a single eight pin. So it's actually pretty low on power consumption when we have a thousand watts to work with. And we are gonna be adding storage ourselves. You can get a storage drive ready to go with even Windows installed from PC server parts. It will cost a little bit more, but for us, we're gonna show you guys how to add your own drive. We have this basic TimeTech Gen 3 NVMe drive, one terabyte of storage. I think if you're gonna build a PC at this price point, you need at least a terabyte of storage because we are gonna be testing some new AAA titles on this PC. We haven't got Indiana Jones in the great circle, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> which you guys know the lore behind that and me. Uh, yeah, you're a part of the Discord community. Join if you haven't already. But uh, yeah, one terabyte SSD is gonna be great and um, super easy to install. So let's go ahead and start with the SSD. Then we'll pop in the GPU and then we'll dive into some testing and see how it performs. Okay guys, let's install the SSD first. Now you are gonna have to move this like fan cage, which also acts as the GPU. GPU uh, power connector holder out of the way. Uh, make sure it's in the unlocked position. And we're gonna go ahead and push back, which allows you to basically move this fan, just like so. Make sure not to pull on that wire too hard because it is the, the actual cable for the fan. Um, as you see right here, we have a little standoff that has a mini little screw on it. We're gonna go ahead and take a pH, what do we got right here? This is a pH zero. We'll run pH zero, probably pH one would work as well, but pH zero, if you're careful, just don't strip it out. We're gonna go ahead and get this bad boy out. Boom, and just like that, we're gonna keep that off to the side. And we were just talking off camera about this. It's much easier to install an SSD by sliding in like so, and push it down. Might have to move these power connectors out of the way versus uh, the P520, which uses a very smart locking mechanism that we just are not smart enough to understand apparently. <laughs> You at home might be like, well, they're super easy guys if you just knew how it worked. And I was like, well, we've had multiple P520s and we've yet to figure it out. So maybe one day guys. So we'll go ahead and screw this down like so. And just like that, boom, your SSD is installed and ready to go. And we're going to put this back into place. This can be kind of difficult to lock in sometimes. So you got to really lock in gamers. So you just really want to push that in like so, and then make sure she's locked so she doesn't move anywhere. So that is installed. Now, Jax is going to do the very difficult part, guys, <laughs> installing the graphics card. And uh, he will show you how to use this adapter. But if you get just a normal 3070, which I say a good price right now is between 250 to 280, because it does compete with the 4060. It's a little bit faster than that card. And that card goes for around $300. So you are saving a good amount of money. Um, you can find one of these models. Just make sure it's not a massive 3070, because you have a decent amount of clearance to fit a GPU in, but not a ton. All right, so first things first, uh, we're gonna make sure that we have the proper PCIe blockout tabs open, which as you can see, this build happened to already have a two slot card installed at one point, so we're good to go there. So what we're going to do, I'm gonna have to flip this around, Jonah. So down, and then it just flips open like that, which you can kind of get an idea on how this works. So it's actually, that's, that's nice and simple, we like that. Now we're gonna take our 3070, 
So we're just gonna kind of line it up. We're gonna get it in place. And then once we actually have the PCIe slot nice and lined up, and we kind of look up top here too to make sure we're good. I'm gonna push down. What am I missing here? Because it almost looks like this isn't. Okay, I think oh, it is. It's, okay, it it's is. those. All right, yeah. yeah, these these guys right here, I mean, they're tall, and I will say, it definitely locks the card in, but it makes it a little bit difficult. So we'll go ahead and lock this in. Push that back on. Make sure they're both locked in. Now, normally, like Matt was saying, if this was really any other card, like not a Founders Edition, uh, you could just take one of these eight pins and just plug it straight in. But with this one, we got to use our little handy dandy 12 pin adapter. This is different than the 16 pin that you guys are used to seeing on, you know, all new 40 series. And on Reddit catching series. on fire. Yeah, and catching fire. Um, hey, this started it all. <laughs> this connector started all the fires. So then we're going to take the eight pin, plug it into the adapter. Oop, there we go. So yeah, that was pretty easy. And it's yeah, once I like I like what Matt was saying because back when we were looking for a PC to test with that 5090, um, I remember we talked about these. We just had no clue what PC came with four eight pins, and this for whatever reason has four eight pins for those quadros, I guess. Now, last thing you need to do before you put your side panel back on is this uh, pre-built. Yours may not, but ours comes with this like extra support piece, which is probably for whatever graphics card came out of the factory with it. Uh, it won't work with the graphics cards you have installed. So all you gotta do is pinch and slide this way just to get rid of that piece so now your side panel could go on nice and easy and is not going to crush your graphics card let's test make sure real quick wow i felt good just like that see if it turns on real quick boy i like this thing has a really good ports on the front you see that we got two usb c's it's nice. pretty cool so yeah this um again Price and performance, it's gonna be solid. It's more or less, you're gonna get the best value for somebody who wants to, let's say, build something for the first time that is incredibly easy to build because you're not really building, you're just adding storage and a graphics card. So first PC, great option for that. Can you build a full gaming PC for the same price that performs close? Probably, but I'm excited to see what the performance is gonna be like in 1440p and 1080p in the latest titles. And um, you have to definitely jump to those benchmarks because setting it up was easy and gaming on it is gonna be even better. All right, guys, we are playing Marvel Rivals on our once office PC, now gaming PC. And we're actually running some pretty respectable settings here. So we're currently doing uh, 1440p with DLSS set to quality. And we got VSync off. We're running basically medium preset, which does actually have some ray tracing even on. A little bit of ray trace action and uh, getting about 100 FPS. I'd imagine native 1440 being like the 70 to 80 range. So it can't do native 1440, but I think DLSS is a smart play here. Yeah, right now we're basically running like, I think it's like 80% render scale. So, yeah. And it really doesn't look bad at all. And no, I'm not getting latency. Don't even ask. <laughs> He's playing just fine. Yeah, the 3070 is capable of 1440p in certain games, especially the lighter titles, easily played 1440. I'll be showing you guys worst case scenario with uh, Spider-Man 2 here in a minute, but uh, yeah, we'll be doing some built-in benchmarks at the end at 1080p to show you guys, hey, AAA titles, 1080p, no problems, but you can do 1440p if you're not scared of DLSS. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why is Venom the only enemy I've seen? Go. Big ol'. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Oh my god, I'm on fire. That's, um, that's the dude from Christ the Crew. Oh, oh, oh god. Oh, Get away. Oh, Get away. No. Heal me. Heal me. And I don't even have an answer. Oh, really. oh, oh my god. There's your answer. Wow. You hit him. Nuts. 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 Nuts to your face. Ooh. <laughs> that, that's, their, that's their ace right there. That's, that's their team player. They call me the tank pumper. Oh god. Nope. Nope. No. Oh, oh my god. No. I remember in the first season the portal like actually would like it would people's PCs would just shut down. <laughs> we were not ready for the world to have portals. Well yeah. guys, it runs good. Runs solid. 1440p. Uh, let's move on to the next game. Alright guys, we are in Spider-Man 2 and we are currently running the following settings. We got 1440p on high settings, no upscaling currently. Now there's a ton of different upscaling you can do uh, with Spider-Man 2, um, but Really the goal in this game is to get 60 FPS. And for the most part, uh, we're gonna get dips here and there when we're swinging around the city. We're getting down to about even like the 30s at some point loading in stuff. We'll see how that maintains. This will definitely be a game where DLSS will be very nice to have because there is a lot that you're loading in. Let's see what happens when we go over to this, uh, this fight over here. Oh, die. Yeah, around 60 FPS native high settings. You could try 1440p medium and maybe get closer to 60, but even just like flying around like that, it's definitely going to be uh, a bit intensive on this system, CPU and GPU wise. Smash. 
Boom! Oh my gosh. Well, Miles, you got him. So we're gonna try some DLSS. Uh, we're gonna target a dynamic scaling resolution of 60. Uh, so it'll make things a little bit more dynamic. Let's apply changes here. So yeah, it, it's gonna be tough to maintain 60 at 1440p here. This will definitely be a game, as you'll see in the other benchmarks, that you're probably gonna be better off at 1080p. I can even try some frames in a little bit here. I'll actually go dis display settings here. Where do those frames come from? That's crazy. <laughs> They're fake. They're fake frames. But hey, I mean, if we're getting 60 FPS, which I will say it doesn't feel like a really smooth 60, you can kind of tell that there is some frame gen going on here, but it is holding 60 a little bit better. Um, in a single player game like this, where it doesn't really matter to have the most fast response times, I mean, this is perfectly fine. But yeah, I would definitely say 1080p for this one and uh, the other games we'll be testing because you guys always talk about seeing some higher end games. Let's run some more higher end games uh, and then we'll be able to wrap this video up and kind of come to the conclusion about this PC because it is easy to build. But we got to go over the price performance value here to see if for you at home, does it make sense to build or should you just learn how to build a full fledged gaming PC and do that instead? Let's go ahead and run those benchmarks and find out. All right, so we just got done doing some 1440p benchmarks on our HP Z4, and I would say this thing did pretty darn good, and my favorite part is the fact that we did not have to take the risk of building a full PC from scratch, because for some people, it's just not worth the risk. So the fact that this comes in, it's very resilient, you just pop in your parts real quick, and then you're good to game, it's pretty cool. I love this era of workstation upgrades we're in right now, where you can have these options that are way more powerful than the older Optiplexes and get really good price performance. I'm gonna talk about some other AAA benchmarks that we did test at 1080p, because 1440p is a little much for these higher end games, and the Jax is gonna talk about the 3D Mark score we got. We ran Indiana Jones in the great circle, ladies and gentlemen. 1080p medium settings with no upscaling. We got around 55 to 60 FPS. I would run with adaptive VSync on though. You will see a before and after here. The screen tearing is horrible at 50 FPS if you don't run any sort of VSync, so definitely do that. Aim for a lock 60 here. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, 1080p medium settings with no upscaling, got 60 plus FPS as well. Black Myth Wukong, 1080p medium settings with no upscaling. We got a 77 average with a max of 95, a minimum of 12. And we threw in CS2 here. This is an easy game, but this is a good test for the CPU on low settings. It got an average of 224 FPS. Now let's talk about that 3D Mark Time Spy score. Now running that 3D Mark Time Spy, we got a really good score. We ended up getting a score of 12,397, which is a five cent per point, which at our channel, that's a pretty good score. That means this PC has pretty good price to performance. So overall, this thing definitely gets a pretty good pass from the Toasty Bros. And just like the P520, I think we'll definitely be revisiting these for other GPUs. So if you guys want to buy one of the Z, for G4 from PC Server Parts, link in the description down below. You can use our discount code as well to save extra money on your purchase. And everything else will be down below an affiliate link and it will help us out. Let us know what you think of this PC down below and are you considering building one? Joan, you gotta come back up. We need we need to go home. We need to wrap up this video. So if you guys like this video, make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye. Now, if this was still too much, you still don't wanna build a PC. Like you don't even wanna to have to even put a graphics card or an M.2 in. You just wanna buy one ready to go. This will be for sale at PCBros.tech. You know what? I'm gonna take you there. All right, let's, come on, follow him. Come on, I'll show, come you, guys, on. I'll show you guys PC Bros. Come on, let's go, do you wanna go? Yep, come on. Guys, we have an actual store. It's called PCBros.tech. Look at it, it's right here, and Jake will be here to greet you if you show up at the store. PCBros.tech, use code Toys Bros on checkout, save 3% your next purchase. See you guys 3%? Whoa! What?